Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Tim Hart, branch manager of Van Dyke Mortgage here in Fort Myers, Florida. Welcome to the Heartbeat Show podcast. Today, I, I'm pretty stoked. We've got a pretty cool guest, a guy I've been following for over a year now. Uh, his real name is Garrett Stewart. Most of you are going to know him as Captain Planet. Garrett, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing awesome, man. How you doing, brother? Good, dude. I appreciate you being with me today. So it's gonna, I'm looking forward to talking with you. Oh, absolutely, man. When people ask me to do something like this, especially a podcast, it's you're selfish if you say no. And sometimes <laughs> I don't have the gas money to make it all the way to the West Coast and back. But, hey, I can always stick the charger in the phone. <laughs> dude, amen. Yeah, these things are easy to record. That's a good point. Right? Save you money. Do the podcast. Um, exactly. Hey, Garrett, before we get into you and what we're doing here, um, we're, we're going to talk about, just so you guys are listening and watching, um, you know, water quality here in Southwest Florida, huge issue. Uh, last year, red tide, blue-green algae, uh, we all learned a lot uh, about our area and how important water quality is. And so I kind of want to build off of that some. And, and so we're going to enter into, once Garrett's done uh, introduce himself, uh, what we can do um, as citizens of Southwest Florida and basically anywhere else, if you listen to this anywhere else, uh, to help with your own water quality. So before we get into that, Garrett, if you don't mind, man, um, you're an interesting guy. So I, I would like a little bit of backstory for you, man, like where you came from, how you ended up here as Captain Planet. Well, yeah, it's actually kind of funny. Um, like we were saying earlier, a lot of people call me the hippie cowboy. Um, I started off as a cowboy, but I, I was kind of always a little bit hippie, too. <laughs> I'm originally from Kansas. Um, grew up a, a country boy, farm and ranch style living. And I went to school at uh, Pitt State University and studied under Dr. James Dawson, one of 53 algae professors or uh, algae scientists, algologists at that time. Um, so I got to study under him for quite a while and was learning my thing. I thought that algae and farming was my, my jam. And it wasn't until I came down to visit a friend in the Florida Keys and I just fell in love with the reef. Um, I've always wanted to be a bird. And that's when I was a kid I, and, and even in my dreams, I'd be a bird. And when I went snorkeling out on the reef, I was the bird in the ocean because I was up flying around and, and looking down below me at this city, um, this magical city. A lot of people don't know that from Fort Lauderdale down to the Dry Tortugas is the third largest reef on planet Earth. Um, and I just fell in love with it. Uh, shortly after that, I ended up taking a job uh, managing a 120-year-old organic banana and coffee farm north of Ponce in Puerto Rico. And did that for a short time, but I wasn't quite happy there, um, especially with uh, the downfall, the economic downfall that Puerto Rico was experiencing. And I took my, my farming brain and, and, and headed on up to Washington State and made my way down to Oregon and eventually Northern California. <laughs> and one day I realized I didn't like the cold. <laughs> and I, I booked a, a ticket from Eugene, Oregon. Um, to Key West, Florida, where I'd always loved it the most. And I wrote a little note in the car that I owned and said, hey, dude, here's your new car. The title signed in the glove box. Here's my number if you have any questions. Uh, you just <laughs> gave it to somebody? The, uh, yeah, I, I actually talked to him not that long ago. It was pretty cool. But, um, yeah, always give what you can. I wasn't using it anymore, you know, and <laughs> I thought it would be one heck of a way to brighten somebody's day, you know. I bet. I try to, I try to tell a stranger every single day that I love them, um, just to kind of change their perception a little bit. And I usually go for the tough-looking guys like me that look like they're Hell's Angels leaders. <laughs> just, we're not as tough as we look, guys. <laughs> I just look so tough, so people leave me alone. <laughs> funny. You ever had any weird responses back to that? What's the weirdest response you've gotten? Um, I think the really uh, the weirdest and coolest response. Or maybe the best response, I should say. Yeah, this this it's definitely the best too. Um, it wasn't that long ago. I was in a convenience store and I walked in in the morning and and people think I'm a really positive morning person because of my attitude, but really I'm not. I I cheer other people up and then that makes me happy. 
and I'm not a morning person, so I, I seem super cheer, cheerful in the mornings because I'm trying to make people smile so then I'll feel good. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. feed off other people's love. And I walk into this convenience store and I say, you know, morning, everybody, and nobody says anything. You know, and then I say, well, keep walking around with that attitude and see how it treats you. <laughs> nobody laughed in the big guy even bigger than me and I'm six foot three 250 pounds big old biker guy just turns around and glares at me and it's like hey man nodded my head up he's like I got something to say to you and everybody got quiet and he turns around with that look like gosh kid don't make me beat you up in here <laughs> and I'm shaking my head yes like yep I got something to say to you pal it's like yes yeah, say it and I said I love you man and he starts smiling and he's like, I love you too. And so I open my arms up. And I'm like, you want to hug it out, bro? And he, he gives me a big old hug. And then the lady standing next to us, like, turns it into a three way. And then the gal working over the cash register leans over the counter and turns it into a four way hug. And as I'm letting go of everybody, I notice this old man towards the back that looked like he really wanted a hug, but. Maybe his knees and hips didn't move as fast to get there. And, and I walked over towards him. I was like, sir, can I give you a hug? Because he was old enough. You better ask permission. Like he could have been like a Korean War vet or something. Right. Splitting the kneecap open with his cane. And he nodded his head yes. And I, I went and gave him a hug. And he squeezed me so tight, man. And he, he whispered in my ear that my wife died 10 years ago. And I haven't hugged anybody ever since. And I gave him a good squeeze back knowing that it might be his last hug here on earth too. You know, um, it all, if he hadn't hugged anybody in 10 years and as old as he was, he may have not got another hug. You know, so I was really glad that I, I took my time to spread Dang. a little bit of joy in the world, you know? <laughs> man, I would have been, did, I would have been crying right in front of Oh yeah, man. I, I, I kept it tough. You did? I just kind of acted funny, and then I went out in my truck and bawled my eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be able to hold back. I, I have what crying. I call overactive tear duct disease, and I'm really surprised that I didn't cry just telling the story. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's cr what a good but story, yeah, though, man. Because I thought I was going to affect the big biker dude, but it was the old man's life who needed affect in that day, I guess. So it was, it was humbling. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. That's cool. Good story. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let's keep your uh, story rolling there. We got a, we, we got a little tangent. So uh, how did you <laughs> Captain Planet? You got the keys. We got you down in the keys. What's that? So we got you down in the keys. You've given away yeah. your car. Yeah, and I I, I started um, started hanging out in the keys there, and probably a few months into it, um, I I was uh, took a job as a marine science educator scientist, where it was my job to travel around the, the Florida Keys with live animals and teach guests at resorts um, about the ocean and how to love it. You know, so see Key West, let's say it might be a little stinky from the seagrass. So the Marriott Beachside or some of these other resorts, they want to pay Mr. Captain Planet here to go around and teach their guests about how cool seagrass was. And that's why it had to stink because my homies, the endangered pygmy seahorses and 40% of the other Florida Keys, you know, native members there, they needed that seagrass at some point in their life. So I was going around just teaching. And then I also started uh, working with Namaste Eco Excursions and partnered with them. And I was giving uh, reef tours. So it was citizen science. You would go out there with me and, and uh, Jeff Bowman and we document um, coral growth from the plantings that we were doing with Moat Marine Labs and um, Coral Restoration Foundation. And then we would also uh, be doing fish counts, all kinds of neat education. So really my, my whole life has just kind of been revolved in education. You know, even as a farmer, I, I teach farming. You know, I'm, as a crop consultant, I'm teaching you how to be a better farmer. So out of all the hats I wear, I guess they can all be summed up in the one, and that's a teacher. Gotcha. And so you came on my radar with – um, last year during red tide, blue green algae, that whole thing, um, you did a really, you know, probably impromptu video uh, about the problem, you know, the, yeah. the nutrient pollution problem. 
And so uh, fill me like, I just real quick would like to know like how, like, how did things turn for you? Because watching you on Facebook, watching you and, and you know your social media and stuff, I can tell that you are living your passion, that you're you know doing what you feel you're meant to be here to do. And so, like, did how did your life change? Is that kind of when when things kind of turned for you? Is whereas you 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 kind of became more of I don't say celebrity, but uh, you know more popular, uh, more well known in this circle. That you're, that you're working in? Well, I really sense? think it all, I really think that the strongest turning point of my life, looking back, um, would have been in Puerto Rico, simply because of the fact that that's when I realized just how much trash my life produced. And that's when I really got into recycling and sustainability. Oh, okay. And if it wasn't for that concept, I don't know if anybody would really know me. Um, because, you know, in the Florida Keys, I'd started the Captain Planet Project, which was the original name of my now company, the Eco Preservation Project. And what that company was doing is I was doing educational and, and um, eco consulting. So I'd go into co schools and then I'd also go into businesses and show them how they could become more eco-friendly and sustainable for the environment, which is a huge deal in the Keys, um, especially just the PR status. But uh, people kept tagging me in videos from the discharge thing from Lake Okeechobee and, you know, asking Captain Planet, can you help these people? Um, probably friends of theirs that they had in mainland. And, you know, I, I, I looked at the situation and to me, it was pretty easy to see the situation, even though they were asking me because I'm an algae scientist. You know, I made a video talking about it was a nutrient pollution problem and it was probably just an eight minute impromptu video that I made in my little organic garden at Key West. And, and I guess that changing point was because I'm a man of my word and I made the mistake of saying, surely there's somebody smarter than me up there helping you guys out. But if you need my help, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't. And, and, and well, yeah, like, well, it's, I don't mean that egotistical, but like when I, you know, about a month into it, you know, and, and people had just, I woke up the next day and people were saying how I had a virus or something. And I'm like, nah, I'm just from Kansas and I got a deep voice. It's just the way I talk. And I didn't know they were saying that I'd gone viral. I didn't realize that <laughs> basically overnight that video had been shared like thousands and thousands of times. Yeah. And I didn't have any idea what was going on. <laughs> um, but yeah, people kept asking for help and I I made a decision to quit my job and, and leave my home and my island and travel around up in a borrowed truck <laughs> from my homie Tracy uh, and drove around the state of Florida educating the adults and the kids. You know, and really anymore, uh, I'm just going to be sticking with the kids. Um, it's too expensive to do both and most adults seem to just waste my time. <laughs> just repeat myself over and over again you know but the kids that's where it's at and that they really want to learn you know so in the end the adults can know if they want all you got to do is just ask your third grader trained by captain planet <laughs> they'll tell you the difference between red tide and cyanobacteria and how they affect each other you know so. yeah, well i mean you know us adults we're stuck in our habits you know and yeah it's, it's oh, a exactly. lot, a lot exactly. harder breaking Kids are, are in a moment in life where they're they're being trained to learn, being trained to train. You know, that they 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 don't see that as a bad thing. Like we don't like to change, but kids are eager to change. They're learning how to change. They're all kids want to grow up. You know, and then one day you you, you finally grew up, unless you're me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Peter Pan. That's why I wear the feather in my hat. You know, because is, is that you know, what the feather schools, is? What, what's that? Is that what the feather's for? Yeah. Well, um, you know, I go into schools and, and imagine I, I'm kind of a scary looking guy. I've got tattoos all over me and a long hair and beard. And um, I go into these preschools and kindergartens and some of these <laughs> little kids are like, oh, gosh. You know, so it's it's kind of it started as a funny little joke where I put a feather in my hat and I said, 
it's okay, kids. Like, I look like Captain Hook, but I'm more like Peter Pan, see? And I pointed at my feather. <laughs> um, That's a good line. Kind of became my trademark, I guess, you know? <laughs> so cool. I, I've always got the owl feather in my hat, you know, the, the messenger. But yeah, nice. it's really more for the kids. You know, um, only a kid would stick a feather in his hat and walk around. <laughs> well, so to, 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 to come off that, though, like, are you, I mean, if anyone's watching this and they have, um, you know, maybe they're a principal at a school, uh, you know, or, you know, science classes or maybe even camps or whatever, um, do you want them to reach out, reach out oh, to you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So do it through what your Facebook page or what's the best way for them? Yeah, the, the probably the best way is to go through the Facebook page because for some reason when you're going through my website, it wants to go through my spam email when you email me, and then I don't see the email sometimes and I forget to check it for a good week or so. Yeah, but um, yeah, the, uh, go through my um uh, Facebook page or even the website, uh, the EcoPreservationProject.org, and it'll have my email and all that bit on there. Um. The, the website's great for teachers and principals and uh, just to get an idea of, of who I am, where I've been, and what I'm up to. Uh, yeah. I do this all for free. You know, that's that's the, the key to it is it doesn't cost the schools a dime. And I haven't been to one school that I've ever asked to go to. You know, I've never called a school before. All these schools that you see me in, I think I taught over a thousand kids at least this last week in person. I was at a school every day and I didn't call any of them. They, they contact me and ask, ask, you know, Hey, Captain Planet, the kids are all talking about you and how cool it would be if you came to our school and, and you asked me to come. I've never turned down a school yet. Man, I'm going to get you in a couple here in Southwest Florida. So yeah, it's, it, it's, it's pretty amazing stuff. You know, it's, it's, being a hero to kids, but also being a hero that teaches them things like responsibility, um, you know, like how it should be their job to take out the trash in the household so then they can be responsible for the recycling. Um, you know, our kids are learning so that they, they can learn it from me versus the adult makes a mistake, puts the wrong thing in the blue bin, and the whole blue bin goes to the trash instead of the recycling. Um, so teaching the kids of the education and and, and, and responsibility and, and is cool. I mean, hey, <laughs> not how many role models are supporting that kind of stuff these days? Yep. You know, I mean, you ain't seeing me bowing on a field or anything like that. You know, it's just kind of, hey, you know, we've got to got to remember our our little ones are always watching us. Mm -hmm. They're learning how to become human beings, but they're learning to become human beings from humans that forgot how to be human. You know, so we have to take a step back sometimes and, and try to figure out you know, what what does it mean to be a human being? You know, and are we worthy of that crown that we put on our head? Buddy, I could uh, probably keep talking about different things all day with you. Um, <laughs> but Ask a question, you'll get a response. Yeah, right? I, I, I want to get <laughs> to the original topic. Good, cool conversations. Let's do it sometime in the future again. Um, oh, absolutely. So, what what we want to get into? Oh, I lost you. Yeah. Hold there on. You You're coming back. There you are. There you go. Um, so what I want to get into though is uh, Southwest Florida again. I'm in Fort Myers here, Fort Myers, Florida. Red tide, blue green algae, and um, whether or not you know we have round two of this like we did last year. I don't know if you have any inside into that i don't know if we want to get down that road and kill everyone's dreams or not is is that a, is gonna be round two or what do you think yeah um well you have to think too um irma had a lot to play with this as well you know when she skimmed over lake okeechobee she churned up the muck layer and that's where all the nitrates and phosphates are so they suspended into an area where the cyanobacteria naturally occur at that top layer where they can reach the sunlight, for example. Because um, that cyanobacteria, the blue-green algae, that needs sunlight. Well, those suspended nutrients, it takes a long time for those to settle back down. And on top of that, before Irma, um, this is why I bring up Irma, before Irma, there was five 
there was 35,000 square acres of grass in Lake Okeechobee you know, that acted like a filtering system, like a kidney. And now there's only 5,000 acres. You know, the day after Irma, there was only 5,000 acres. Um, so you have to think, you know, we, we've lost the filtration system of that as well. So everything, including the weather, uh, it would lead me to believe that, yes, we're going to have an experience that's going to be a lot like last year's as far as the, the red tide. Now, or not red tide, but the blue-green algae. And, but when it concerns the red tide, one thing I'm hopeful for is how low that they've kept that lake. Um, now, if there is a big, huge green, blue-green algae bloom in that lake, hopefully with a lot less gallons in that lake, we won't have to be putting discharges. Because when you see that blue-green algae, you think all those nitrates and phosphates that it's eating are inside of it. So if we shoot that out to the ocean, all those nitrates and phosphates and the cyanobacteria that's a freshwater bacteria die, and then it's available for whatever needs it out in the ocean, which is a dinoflagellate um, known as K. brevis, we call the red tide. So it, it, it's just trying to do everything that we can do, but have we been doing a lot? Uh, no, I don't think we have, but that's what we're going to be talking about right now, too, is what we can all do, each of us, instead of just complaining about government nonstop. <laughs> Amen. Well, you know, Garrett, what I've seen out there is, you know, in my own life and friends I know and have, it's some of these problems, I mean, especially when you look towards government, they, they're so overwhelming to just <laughs> you, the individual, you know, like, oh, what difference yeah. can I make? Yeah. And then in reality, you know, the difference you make is starting at home, whether it's culturally, right, with your family and you, you, you start at your house. And so, you know, same thing with the environment. And so that leads us perfectly into, um, you know, I, I know you got a few points, but, you know, we're going to call it the top five things that we can do in Southwest Florida to help with the water quality here. Mm -hmm. um, and it can be used anywhere, but go ahead, man. You got some, uh, you got some uh, things to talk about. Well, the first one, would definitely be uh, fertilizers, you know, and, and when I say fertilizers, let's just go ahead and sum up lawn care in general is number one, um, because not just nasty synthetic fertilizers um, that are slow release granular, um, but also the herbicides like Roundup, you know, a company called Monsanto created that nasty chemical. Um, it's, it's a nasty cancer causing chemical that, that's done quite a lot of damage, you know, and, and here in Florida, especially, you know, landscapers, I see them using um, dicamba, for example, around people's houses. That chemical is so dangerous, we don't even allow it in big agriculture back in Kansas. It's 100% across the board illegal, and they're putting it around our children and our pets here. Um, so we need to get informed and educated about what's happening in our lawns. Um, as far as fertilizers go, either don't do it or use organic fertilizers or eco-friendly fertilizers. And what do I mean by eco-friendly fertilizers is fertilizers that aren't 100% organic. For example, I work for a company called Greener Solutions, my day job. And Greener Solutions, we provide uh, eco-friendly fertilizers. Now, it's, it's not 100% organic because it's derived um, from soluble nitrogen, which is organic nitrogen, and also um, soluble uh, urea, as far as a liquid form of urea. Now, urea is something that we automatically think poorly about because we think of those little white pebbles, um, you know, that leach. Now, that's in that granular form. So with this stuff, it's actually bound with a hydrogenase enzyme um, that splits water molecules. So it's more than just fertilizer, but it's soil remediation for your lawn as well and all this little science talk what it boils down to is it's fertilizer that does not leach meaning you can keep your grass green without the red tide um, a lot of these people i wish we could just do away with grass you know the whole reason lawns even exist is because of the silly concept back in europe that if you were rich enough 
to have some peasants take care of your lawn and trim it than it meant that you were upper class. You know, we brought that to the new country here and uh, we don't even think about some of the things that we do. Personally, I think there should be food in our lawns and, uh, and, and not grass. But you've got stuff like HOAs and all that bit. And I understand there's laws that we can't just change overnight. Um, so for places like these HOAs and other, other spots, it's important to understand that they can still use a fertilizer that doesn't destroy the environment. You know, the number one complaint that I see in Florida at resorts, for example, on TripAdvisor, is not enough tropical landscaping. That means that we've been selling a half-price tri half trip to Fiji for the last 20 years to our tourists, trying to make it look like it's Indonesia or Fiji or Africa or something here, instead of teaching the tourists about natural Florida. You know, I always said if Trump's going to make America great again, Captain Planet's going to make Florida natural again. <laughs> we, need to start, we need to start teaching our tourists about the importance of our mangroves and our, our seagrasses. For example, brother, did you know that seagrass in the state of Florida used to sequester more carbon than the Amazon rainforest before we started letting it die off? So not only does it make your captain mad, and his son mad when our seagrass dies off from cloudy water, but it's making a kid in China affected. It affects everybody in the world. We need to stop looking at stuff as mine and start looking at it as ours. You know, so when we start looking at our yards as everybody's instead of just mine, 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 instead of thinking about how selfishly it seems to put the wrong fertilizer for a silly grass that doesn't belong here in the first place, start thinking about eco landscaping. You know, when we use native plants in our landscaping, for example, they don't require that extra fertilizer. They don't require the extra water. So you don't have to do the irrigation, etc. But hey, if you just moved into a spot, you don't want to change it, you know, say, hey, Captain Planet, I'm not full blown eco hippie, but I would like to help out check it out man i've got what's called a bio feeder one little splice into your irrigation system and you don't even have to fertilize any anymore because you're micro dosing your plants we've got a setup we were actually just on national television with skip bedell through uh um, some news channel um there last friday so it was really cool skip bedell is actually the the um, educator for home depot <laughs> he does like all their educational videos and all that bit mm -hmm. Yeah. And some friends of Greener Solution um, knew him and he wanted to do a, a little interview thing about um, the bio feeder on their show. So what it's doing is just micro feeding the same amount that you would use um, in a month's time. For example, if I sold you a quart and you're going to use half a bottle in a month's time, all you would do is put a half a bottle in the bio feeder, fill it up the rest of the way with water and it does it for you all month long. And by microdosing what these plants need, you're reducing the leaching. Um, it's, it's, it's really awesome stuff. We have to pay attention to the microorganisms that are in our soil instead of just the plants that are above it. 95% you know, of terrestrial life on Earth exists below the soil, not above it. You know, just one spoonful, spoonful of that soil, there's actually more organisms than there are humans on Earth. So if we start tending to their needs a little bit, they'll start tending to the plant's needs, which is our needs, right? That's the whole point of the landscaping. Um, so I feel that that's a super, super important concept to start adopting is eco-landscaping and eco-fertilizers. Okay. Um, you know, even in Kansas, for example, my hometown um, lake was closed for a cyanobacteria bloom in the summer. You know, so it's happening all over the earth. It's not just in Florida. Um, Florida is just a, a, a prime spot for it to happen. Yeah, I've seen it. You know, people in Michigan and Ohio talk about it. And I've seen a few other things like that. Um, but I'll put, by the way, the, the fertilizer, the biofeeder and stuff, I'll put links for that inside yeah. the, uh, the body of our message. So people, if they, if they yeah, absolutely. It. If you guys ever want to order, it's super easy. You just go to www.greenersolutionsfl, like Florida.com. And then whenever you're ordering, 
enter captain for the promo and that's going to give you your discount for knowing me oh see this what you yeah guys are yeah watching. gotta get yeah. some inside captain, captain the promo things yeah yeah 100 percent off right. um uh, so uh, what's not what do you got for number two number two is eat local and eat organic now if you had to pick between the two it's a pretty dangerous question <laughs> you know because you have to be mindful of stuff for example an organic avocado it's organic right but is it good for the planet of course not you know because it's still causing deforestation in mexico um, for them to tear down a forest and plant organic avocados for the hippies in florida and california to eat um, <laughs> causing all those emissions everything like that right you know, so we have to keep in mind uh, to eat local as well, you know, so if you're going to eat an avocado, eat a Florida avocado. You know, there's farmers around here that don't use your G the GMOs. Personally, I suggest going and, and, and meeting your farmers. You know, there's a thing called Facebook out, and I think like every farm in Florida has one. It's awesome. I mean, type in your county and then put farms and it comes right up. It's super, super cool. That's how I found uh, my favorite little farm around here. I live in Martin County, um, so I go to Shadowwood Farm. They're actually the only organic certified farm in the county that sells to the public. Um, so where I can just go out there, and it's like a supermarket for me, but it's awesome environment. Um, they even have, like, weddings and different stuff like that out there. But for me, it's all about knowing where your food comes from. Because, one, if it's not organic, it's probably leaching into the soil. Um, as far as the fertilizers go, it's bad for the planet wherever it's coming from. Number two, you're eating GMOs, which means that nasty glyphosate stuff that we don't want in our yard, that Monsanto company that I mentioned earlier. Um, if you're not eating organic, then you're eating Monsanto, and people don't realize that. You know, when you eat Doritos or you eat Frosted Flakes or anything that's not organic, you're eating corn and soybeans and canola that have glyphosate in it. And glyphosate doesn't wash off. I'm an agricultural scientist, trust me. This is incorporated into every part of the plant in every cell. It's systemic, it travels through the plant. You know, so what a GMO is, is, is means basically that you can spray that same poison on the corn and everything dies in the field except for the corn. And then we tell ourselves that that corn is safe. When in fact, it's not. You know, there's countries like France that have uh, kicked Monsanto clear out of the country. Um, they don't want those products being used. And I suggest for your children's safety um, to try to eat as organic as you possibly can. You know, and eating local, it also goes back to, you know, you have the emissions, but also the sound. You know, a lot of people don't realize the sound noise pollution it's a real thing tim um have you ever been in the bathtub as a kid and, and put your head your ears in the water and you can talk and you hear yourself way louder yeah you know water is an excellent conductor of noise and this is how all my homies talk to each other that live in the water you know so all my whale homies and my dolphin homies just about all my homies they survive off sound because light doesn't travel very far in the ocean, but sound does. In fact, I could stick on my headphones and, and listen to a right whale in Boston right now from here. You know, or I could sit there and listen to a whale on the other side of planet Earth. But what's happening is 95% of how we get goods from point A to point B are by cargo ship. And they're destroying these sound barriers. Not only that, but we have those seismic air gun blasts. You know, these seismic air gun blasts is how they, they search for new oil. You need to make sure because they're coming to Florida, man. All these Florida people think that Florida's off limits because old pretty Ricky, Governor Rick Scott, said that Florida was off limits, but it was just a PR stunt. When in fact, Florida is not off limits to offshore drilling. But it's not just the drilling, it's the exploration. Because the exploration was sound, you know, you're, you're getting beached dolphins and beached whales. You're destroying their ability to hunt and 
communicate with themselves. So if you're thinking about eating local, you know, like you got to think about all the things that you're doing that's good for the planet. You know, like you're actually affecting some narwhal in, in the Arctic, for, for example. I mean, it's just, it's neat, you know, because you, you have to understand just how connected everything is. And most people never even had a clue about noise pollution. You know, as far as never even considering that, the noise from our boats and all this and that. You know, so eating local and eating organic, you know, that stops local pollution and it also stops worldwide pollution in the process. You know, but you have to think about your health. You know, you're eating organic and what you're putting into your body comes out of your body. And where does where do we put what comes out of our body? We put it in the toilet. And, and, and that's the end of the game to us. We just think it gets washed up by Gandalf from Lord of the Rings or something and it takes it to a magic place where all the bad stuff disappears. Well, wake up call. You know, I did a test in Florida where we took aquarium raised mussels and then tested them and they were tested negative for opiates and then put them in the Florida waters for 24 hours and they tested positive for opiates. Meaning Florida is getting so high that even the, the, the mussels are high out in the ocean. You know, so, really? Yeah. Now you think about that. Like if you're, you know, eating organic, then you're not putting these poisons back out there, you know, so you be natural, you know, you want to stay away from those pills are bad for you kids. You know, um, everything we put into us, it comes back out of us. You know, there was one sample that I took a biosolid, a class B biosolid. And I think I found 48 different chemical compounds of pharmaceuticals and like makeup products and hair product stuff. It's just unbelievable. Um, so we have to start understanding what we're doing to the planet. You know, there's 200 species a day on average that go extinct. 200 animals a day go extinct. That's an extinction rate five times faster than when the dinosaurs went extinct. And the problem is we're sitting here just worried about algae. You know, the, the point is, is we need to extend our backyards and realize that the whole planet is our backyard, you know, because our kids are being affected tremendously and we're going to be dead before it really hits the fan. You know, it's, it's my kids that I'm worried about. It's all of our kids. And when I say my kids, I kind of mean every child on earth, my kids. <laughs> right. No, I, I, I figured you were talking about that. 200, 200 species a day. Yep. That's a, Keep in mind a lot of insects. You know, when people try to wrap their mind around that, I even had a science teacher um, in a high school auditorium and it like raised his hand and challenged me about that, like, 200 species a day at 6,000 a month or whatever the number is like, I don't, I'm not buying it. And I was like, sir, this is exactly what I was telling the kids about no bullying and stay in your lane. And I was like, did you know that there's more species of coleoptera beetles than there are mammals? You know, his smile went to a frown like, uh Oh, he got me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Insects are animals too guys. Um, and there's more species of beetles than there are mammals. You know, so most of these species that are going extinct um, are, are birds and insects. You know, so it's it's pretty sad. You know, I was listening to a, a mating call, like probably 20 minutes before I, I got on this podcast. And it's a mating call of a bird in Hawaii. And I was in tears, you know, because it was actually the last male on earth. And he was singing to a mate that would never come. You know, and that was the last time that that, that bird was ever recorded being on Earth. You know, it's, mm. Man, we, we've got to wake up. It's the sixth mass extinction period. It's real. You know, it's evident in the fossil record. It's nothing to joke about. Gotcha. What about number three? Number three, we've got the mini reefs. My <laughs> homie's ocean habitats. Um, this is This is one of my faves right here. Um, and surely you guys have heard about this cool cat, David Wolf, um, he's a marine biologist and um, founder of the Ocean Habitat. So 
me and him are homies. Me and him are tighter than Garth Brooks's jeans, actually. Uh, we've been working on <laughs> we've been working on a duckweed module together too. Um, so we're gonna have a mini reef to offer for freshwater systems as well. Um, so then all my little landlocked homies back in Kansas can have ways to clean up their lakes too. But even though it's called a mini reef, it's actually more like a mini mangrove. You know, um, the way that these are structured, it's actually like replicating the crop roots of a mangrove tree. Um, so you're providing surface area for things to attach themselves onto. You know, we went in and we destroyed all the natural habitat and then just put in some seawalls to canals like it was going to be the same, but it's not. You know, so don't quote me on the gallons, but I think it's something like 2,200 gallons a day that it cleans. Just amazing. And I do know that it's 300 fish and 200 crabs that these little mini reefs uh, give a home to on average. And, and watching the life is just super, super cool. So you've got everything from bivalves like oysters um, to um, sea squirts that are, are the closest relative to the human being. And like I was telling you earlier, sea squirts actually eat their own brains, you know, which is pretty cool since they're our closest relative. And I kind of joke that, you know, that might be true with humans too. As we age, I think we kind of theoretically just start eating our own brains and the ego just starts to go out the roof and then our, our capability to learn just lowers. I always teach the kids we've got we've got two ears and one mouth. You know, and if we use them in that ratio, that we're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And I giggle. I say, you look at the adults, you know, and they'll 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 act like they have two mouths and one ear. <laughs> and I do it too. <laughs> so it's something to stay conscious of. Hey, well, can we stay? Well, can we stay on that reef thing for a second? So what's that? The ocean we, habitats. Yeah, the so I was talking to my buddy, uh, shout out Dr. Billy Truax, uh, dentist in town, and we were talking about these reefs, like I was telling you before we got on. And I've seen them on video, they are super cool, and they just hang from your dock, right? And so you yeah. mentioned um, the thousands of, you know, whatever the number is, that it, that it filters of gallons of water. And so can you go into a little bit of detail, like you say cleans it, like, I mean, how, how, how much does one affect or like what if every doc got one or, or something like that? Like, I mean, is it that big of a difference with the filtration? Oh yeah, I, man. I, I, if every doc had one, because think about it, you know, I'm like, that's why we're talking about what's going into your yard too, because if you got yourself a mini reef and you're not using the right fertilizers, then basically your mini reefs just fixing your fertilizer mistake. But if you're using the right fertilizers, and you get a mini reef, then you're fixing your neighbor's mistake, you know, but then all of a sudden, if you get too many reefs and you're fixing both neighbors on both sides and then drinking a beer with them one weekend and start telling them about it and they get them to, you know, then all of a sudden everybody's fixing everybody's mistakes and we're teaching them, you know, how to be get, how to become better, how to be get you like that, yeah. <laughs> how to become better, you know, and that's what it's all about is, is learning how to become better human beings, learning how to coexist with nature, you know, because we're animals too. You know, sometimes when we talk like invasive weeds, for example, like I wonder how earth feels about that because aren't we just an animal? Like is us taking a tree from Brazil and putting it here any different than a deer pooping out a seed that went a little too far than expected? Um, so, you know, it's always just a matter of perception, but whatever the perception is, we know that it's off balance. You know, we've been living in a wrong way. And it's all about how we can live comfortably without wrecking our ecosystem. You know, Florida is what I've always preached is an ecology. You know, our economy is our ecology. Right. So especially in Florida, we have to coexist. Nobody's gonna come down here and stay in your hotel um, to go paddle boarding and, 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 and fishing and, and doing anything other than Disney in this state if our ecology is wrecked. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and then all of a sudden, my homie Jimmy, that owns the, the, the fender bender shop down the street, like he's not getting any deals either because there's less fender benders because there's less tourists driving like idiots around getting in fender benders. You know, like we all need each other. Yeah. So it's time we start acting like Mr. Rogers and 
being each other's neighbors again, you know? Well, and, and that's what happened in Southwest Florida last year. You know, we, I feel like we got our, we were the, the, the big heavy guy that had the heart attack, you know, and like you had that wake up call. And so, yep. you know, that's why I kind of wanted to continue this discussion and get just a little, you know, a little deeper on it. But, um, and I didn't mention last year we did one with uh, Professor James Douglas. You guys should connect sometime uh, from FGCU, man. Great guy. Yeah. Um, he, he's a good dude. But, um, all right, so what you got for number four? Well, number four, short, sweet, and simple. Get your check, uh, get your septic system checked. You know, um, it, it saddens me because even if you buy a $5 million house in this state, it's suggested that you get your septic checked. Like, it's not even a law. It's like, it's like the little yellow... Um, speed sign when you're going through a curve like you can go as fast as you want but it's recommended you go 40 like do you ever slow down all the way to 40 or you keep going 55 right you know, like, <laughs> you know, so it's one of those like hey you know uh that was at some island on the west coast over there where like stephen king and oprah or something live and like man these dudes are living on septic too you know so it's it's we have to keep in mind that our septic systems run at the same level as our water tables do you know people don't realize that you know here in martin county where i live you know the water table actually come up 12 inches below your feet in the summertime during the rainy season I mean, it's insane so think about what you're putting in your yards just dribbling right down a foot through and getting into our our waters you know, so it's a yeah. scary situation. So septic, you know, that's a big deal because you don't know if it's leaking unless you check it. And people don't like to spend money. You know, people don't want to get it checked. But, hey, don't complain to me about algae then. <laughs> well, no doubt. And that's one thing that, um, you know, James hey, – by the way, we do, uh, you know, mortgages. And so, like, there's a couple loan types depending where we have to get it the septic inspection done, but you're uh -huh. right. There's not much else, you know, making people do that. But, um, you know, with, uh, professor Douglas, when we talked, um, it was pretty neat where he's like, basically anything you put on the ground or, you know, anywhere on the ground is going to find its way into the water. And so it's the same thing with these septic tanks, right? They're just leaching out into the water table, which ultimately, Make yep. it out, right? Exactly. Exactly. You know, so Get your septics check for everybody out there. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Can't stress that enough. <laughs> All right. You got anything else on septics? Or you want to move on to number five? Well, let's move on to number five. <laughs> You're a funny guy, man. All right. Number five. What do you got? Hey, ain't, much, ain't much crap to talk about when it comes to crap. You know what I mean? Like, Nailed it. Check it out. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> don't call me for that i'm not the ghostbusters <laughs> now number number five is education and communication boss um okay. you know i think that that's really key is is people need to start educating each other helping each other learn and that's with communication and when i say education i don't mean um how many facebook videos you share you know because sadly it's I see uh, Facebook warriors all the time, like social media justice warriors. But yet, when I go to the meeting at, for Mosaic, I don't see them there. You know, like like where it's just, come on, guys. Like, if you're going to talk to talk, walk to walk. You know, but talking does a lot. You know, talking in a situation in real form. Because somebody's, you make a post about it, most likely nobody's even going to read it. You know, but... Every time I go to a convenience store and they ask, would you like a plastic bag? I say, no, I'm not a fan of them turtle, turtle killers. You know, by the year 2050, our oceans are predicted to have more plastic in them than, than fish. You know, and they look at me shocked. And then, like, you know, I say a little bit more. And, and that's why I'm always late because I'm always preaching, you know, um, <laughs> talking, you know. Because <laughs> if you talk to thy neighbor, you know, uh, that, that's how we used to be, you know, us humans. You know, sometimes I wonder if we're like 
deer converting to eagles, you know, like, like solitary creatures now. You know, with the internet, we're so connected, yet we're so disconnected. Um, we can't even look up from our phones long enough to smile and say hi to the neighbor, you know, and, and ask them if they know what's going on. You know, so it's all about communication. You know, talk about what you're doing for your planet. You know, it's cool. You know, uh, trash tag it. You know, I guess I got the kids trash tagging. They put, they pick up some trash, they type in trash tag. Because you know, that's why I have to be a little bit cool for the kids. Because you know, that's the most important thing to a kid is being cool. And then one day you get old enough that the most important thing is making money. Um, but, you know, it, it has to be cool for the kids to want to do it. And it breaks my heart. Like when I go into these, you know, like native plant society meetings and, and I'm the youngest person by 30 years. Right. You know, like, like, so is all of our native plant knowledge just going to die with our elders? You know, like, like, instead of just whining about it, you know, do something about it. You know, so I am like, I'm making it cool again. You know, like I'm making it where the kids want to learn about native plants. And, you know, and they're coming on weed pulling contests with me at like state parks where, you know, we're pulling invasive weeds and, and not just picking up trash. And so they're learning, you know, which plants are invasive, which plants are not, how they got there and why, and you know, make it always educational there's always something to teach so yeah, but you know what? Time. Gary you, you mentioned something and um I just want to add to it I mean, if you're watching this you're talking about education communication the Facebook warrior thing and it's like when the rubber meets the road because you know I, I'm in uh, serve on my kids school board um you know my little league uh serve on that board for I don't know six seven years coach a team you know and it's like Every year, man, whatever event we got going on, coaches, board members, volunteers for something, you know, the people I know that run our PTO at our school, and you see it all across, so it's just not our little area. Man, it is so hard to find people that want to step forward, raise their hand, and like, hey, I'll help coach yeah. 10 kids, you know, exactly. or I'll be there Sunday between one and three. You know, it's like – it's crazy to hear people complain, complain, complain. You see the politics too, the people that complain, complain, yeah. complain. Well, jump in, man. Like, jump in the ring, dude. Exactly. Go, go make the change. You know, I'll tell you a little story about, you know, leadership as far as when everybody was complaining about the new chief. You know, I was telling them a story about an old chief. You know, and it was a story a long time ago about a group of young men that, that were wanting to take over their tribe as far as, they thought that the old chief had lost his wits and they could fool him. So they were going to wait till the sun dance where all the tribes gathered together and they were going to trick him in front of everybody. And so they had caught in, um, this little bird. You know, they caught in a swallow. Now they had caught in the bird and they were going to go to the chief and they were going to ask the chief if the bird was alive or dead. And if the chief replied that the bird was alive, they were going to squeeze it and kill it and make them look stupid. If he replied that the bird was dead, they were going to let it go and let it fly away to make them look stupid, make them look like, you know, they should be chief. So the day came and the strongest of the warriors, you know, the most daring, he set forth to ask the old chief. And he says, grandfather, you know, I trust your wisdom. Is the bird dead or alive? And the old man, he started to kick a stone and looking at his feet tribe got quiet wondering if it was going to be finally the time where the old man was stumped and lost his lost his headdress you know lost his role and uh he looked at the ground and looked back up and smiled at the boy and he said can't you see the answer is in your hands you know um <laughs> he knew what's up all along you know, and the point of the story is, is people people keep challenging the leader but they don't want to walk up to him with a swallow in their hand you know, um, I don't talk much smack on the president because I don't want this job. You know, I just now became old enough to do it. Everybody last year was like, man, Cap Plant, you should run for president. I'm like, man, I'm not even old enough. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't 35 yet. <laughs> oh, but man. So, you know, it's people need to just step up or go home. You know, uh, stand up or shut up. <laughs> 
you know, and, and it's, it's really like, I don't mean to sound like a jerk when I say that, but I'll go ahead and sound like a jerk when I say that, because I don't, I don't have room. You know, uh, a lot of people, it's just cause more damage than anything because they'll get on there and blast their mouth on Facebook about completely the wrong concept. And then so everybody trying to learn just seems like, oh, wait, those water idiots don't even know what's going on. Huh? You know, and like, you know, and if you're going to sit there and say sugar farming causes the pollution, you know, like then somebody with a brain would go like, man, like how's, how's the water going uphill, you know, into a, over a dike and into the water, you know, like, see, like, like maybe <laughs> the problem with sugar is the location and not the pollution, like, because now you've just lost credibility and you just ticked me off because you've made me lose credibility as far as right. people, people put me in that little lump of all these other overnight geniuses. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's the thing where, you know, you stay in your lane. You know, somebody asked me to write a letter so everybody could, you know, send it to Ron DeSantis about my opinion on how we should make the Lake O flow. And I laughed. It was like, what in God's name would I know about how a 750 mile square lakes flow should be? You know, like, I don't even know about all these estuaries that need this much in water. And like, like, how do you even measure that? Like, I'm not a lake manager. <laughs> like, stay in your lane, guys. Like, when I want to go buy a house, I go to realtor. When I want to go get my hair cut, I get my hair cut from a hairdresser. Like when I want to, you know, go fishing, I hit up my boat captain homies, you know, like it's just kind of a thing where it feels like everybody just wants to start their own little mini revolution and everybody's forgetting about the entire big picture. You know, watching water warriors preach about water as they hold a plastic bottle in their hand, you know, like and lost the entire concept about what it means to protect water. You know, so it's one of those where this summer I don't have the compassion that I did last summer. You know, people are asking me, Captain Planet, why aren't you videotaping the algae like these other guys? You know, like it's back. Like, that's not my job. I'm not the news. Like, if you guys got a question about cyanobacteria, look up one of last year's videos because I'm not going to sit here like an idiot on some dock talking about the same problems we had last year course we've got the same problems nobody did anything about it you know <laughs> let's you know if, if people want to change like i'm a busy man but i made time for this you know because we're talking about what we can do you know not not how can we complain but what can we do like hey bro like stuff hit the fan like man we might need to be friends we might all need to be friends and figure this out Right. To me, it's like the movie Independence Day. You know, Will Smith is cocky, but did he just tell the French to to not help because they have bad jokes? Like, no, like everybody helped because they were trying to fight off the aliens. It's like, Love you know, it. then he punched the aliens. War on terrorism. You're, you know, Earth declared war on terrorism, and we're the terrorists. From Earth's opinion, we need to all be on the same side right now and figure this out and help each other, not have environmental pissing contest between nonprofit organizations. It's just quite ridiculous in my opinion. You know, that's why I don't even ask for donations anymore. It's like 1994 with me. You want to donate, you got to like physically write a check and send it to a PO box. <laughs> <Where can I>? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. hilarious. <laughs> Cash only. Well, yeah. Garrett, man, that was freaking awesome to me. Um, I really appreciate you being on, man. Um, awesome talk. And if anyone wants to connect, I know you're busy on Facebook and stuff, but I'm going to put all those. I got the fertilizer, the biofeeder, and the reef guy. I'm going to put that information in the, the body of the post for everybody on the podcast. As well. um, yeah, when you guys enter, you know, enter that captain promo, like, because, you know, that it's always the captain promo, whether you're buying some trunkers board shorts or some stream to see coral safe sunscreen you know enter that captain promo code and just for knowing me it'll get you that hookup um nice. when you let if when you talk to ocean habitats make sure to tell them the captain planet sent you 
you know, because how that works is any reef that gets referred by me, I get 20% um, back to the uh, eco preservation project. So you're going to spend $250 on a reef either way. But when you tell David that, Hey, I heard about it through Captain Planet, then all of a sudden he gets 200 and then $50 is actually going back to the education guy um, to educate our kids. You know, like it's a really neat little symbiotic relationship that we got going on. Cool, man. You know, so make yeah. sure you tell them that the captain sent you. Um, and that way, you know, you're also think of it as, as not only, you know, helping out ocean habitats in your water, but you're helping out ocean habitats, the water, and you're also helping out Captain Planet, making sure that he can pay for the gas to get in these schools. Yeah. So it's super neat. I, I'm waiting on Elon Musk to email me back about this super cool hippie van that I'm going to have him make for me. So, I look you forward to Elon. Tell him I'm looking for him. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll hit him up on Twitter for you. I'll check him yeah. out. Um, all right, buddy. You got anything else? I think that's it, brother. Yeah, Garrett, man, I appreciate you guys. And if you're watching out there, uh, connect with Garrett, Captain Planet. We'll put all his information in the uh, body of the post. And, uh, again, Garrett, appreciate you being on, man. That was awesome. Before I got to – dude, you remind me so much of my buddy uh, Travis Smith. Shout out to him. Uh, he's the head football coach at Mariner High School, and you two would be freaking – best bros so hey, i'm gonna make sure you throw it up give yeah i'm gonna get you guys connected the kids and hang out with your boy yeah yeah he he would he would love it so um you guys don't forget like share and subscribe this podcast especially you know someone's interested in what garrett's talking about myself um love to if you to do that um connect on social media facebook twitter linkedin youtube instagram all that fun stuff so garrett Thanks again, bro. If you guys watching, appreciate you watching. Thank you and take care, everybody. See you later. Awesome. See you, brother. Thanks, dude. Have a good one, man. See you, man.